What's up? Honor my 26 here after a th almost three month break. Yeah, um, who knew if uh, you've been watching my videos for a long time. Uh, you probably understand the reason why, but if not, a little bit of a clue in. I am a college student. College classes get harder as you get older. Whatever, you probably don't want to hear that. I have other things in my life that get in the way too, but everything's fine. Um, this video is going to be about a, a little bit of a catch up about what I've been doing lately, and then also the main topic of this video is going to be the current WWE product and why I'm doing a video on that. Uh, I will get into it a little bit later, but um, uh, big news out of my life is that, well, at least wrestling wise, I'm not going to be in Miami next year anymore. Um, don't have to get into the reasons why. It just wouldn't work for me with my schedule and stuff like that. So I'm unfortunately having having to give that up. But I am going to be in uh, New York for Final Battle 2011. Cannot wait for Richard vs. Edwards 3. And the Steen stuff does look pretty awesome. Uh, I've seen up to through the 8th uh, episode of Ring of Honor where the main event is uh, the American Wolves vs. Strong and Elgin. And uh, Edwards uses the Dragon Sleeper to choke out Michael Elgin, which is, leads to this Dan Severn stuff. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I also will be first row. First row, I think first and center row, because I, I think the first person to buy their ticket for the uh, Baltimore TV taping. So I'm like going to be in the middle of one of the four rows in the, or something like that. So I'm at least going to be first row. So I'm really excited for January 7, 2012 where I get to be first row for Ring of Honor again for the first time since uh, Civil Warfare. So and <laughs> some of you know that that actually might be a bad omen, but who knows? I'm, if Kevin Steen's on the card, I'll stay away from him. So... All right, let's just get into the main topic of this video, um, which is, and this, t I'm going to catch up on everything that I haven't talked about in the past three months, um, in the next couple of videos. Um, this video is going to be strictly WWE, and that's just Raw and SmackDown. The next video is going to be Ring of Honor, FCW, other infinite promotions, stuff like that. And then I'm going to make a video, uh, which also celebrating my 200th video, uh, down the road about me making a huge plug video. Um, basically, if I'm not able to make the number of videos I would like, which is started hugely by this break um the people that would say and people that i still watch and i still watch and comment on everybody's videos um those people in case you haven't already subscribed to them i'm going to be plugging a lot of those people so all right let's just get to it the wwe product um it's gone uh for me watching it wise has gone down heavily uh since i uh, i'm no longer you know watching uh you know, uh, due, due to the lack of watching and wrestling in general due to my college, you know, stuff, WWE has gone down the drain. You know, I've still made time to watch the Ring of Honor TV show, to watch the PWG shows, to watch the Jakara shows, which I'll get to in my next video. But, you know, actually I still haven't seen High Noon yet, but it's a different story. Um, you know, just stuff like that. I, I, you know, make time for the wrestling that needs to be seen. And with my current, with how I view the WWE, which is a lot different than everybody that I've ever heard on here. Uh, you know, the way I judge it is, you know, my interest level is based off of just how exciting it is. You know, it's just, it's not, you know, oh, I'm not judging it for its, you know, oh, match quality or its entertainment value. I'm judging it just, if I have fun watching it from start to finish, because WWE, you know, has a special place in my heart, I want to watch this. You know, this is the company that got me into professional wrestling. I want to watch it and I want to enjoy it based off of no matter how bad backstage or anything that makes me a smart mark makes it. If it's fun with the favorite wrestlers that I have, I want to sit down and watch it and enjoy it. You know, WWE is a big enough company where there are so many wrestlers that I like that are still in this company. I just want to watch it. You know, that's that's how it is. And, you know, I didn't watch much of it for the past two months until this Friday night with the Daniel Bryan stuff. And the Daniel Bryan stuff was absolutely amazing. You know, he is truly one of the best wrestlers in the world, if not the best wrestler in the world. And he proves it every time he gets the chance to shine. He is just an amazing wrestler. You know, he's just an ama he's just so much fun to watch beyond anyone else that I've seen in the past five or six years. You know, since I started getting into, you know, Ring of Honor and stuff. But it, he is a great wrestler, you know. Um, the four-way was very good. I was very impressed by Rhodes and even Orton and Barrett in the match. So it was very good. Um, I found it very interesting that he has a World Heavyweight title match with still the money to bring brief briefcase. My theory on it, theory is that somehow the cage aspect of that match is going to screw Brian out of the title. Like he was going to win, but then somehow the cage comes into play or it's just an unlucky thing that happens. Uh, Daniel Bryan snaps, turns heel, cashes in on Mark Henry, and wins. Is is I think it's going to all go down Tuesday night. That's my uh, take on it, and I think if that were to happen, that would be 
phenomenal. You know, CM Punk is champion on the Raw brand, and uh, Daniel Bryan is champion on the SmackDown brand. They're two best wrestlers in your company as the champions is pretty much where you should be. So, and then having, you know, guys like the Cena's, the Orton's, chasing them is going to be a fresh view on both brands. It's going to be great. Uh, that, that's ex- that's what I would do. Um, but on, uh, on the SmackDown brand as a whole, I think that, you know, Sheamus is actually doing pretty well. Um, you know, I think Teddy Long is, uh, he's always coming into his own as the general manager, but, you know, him acting, you know, in a more realistic way, like the whole Mark Henry thing, I mean, I didn't agree with it, and I never would have done it that way myself, but because of how it was done and how it presented on TV, I want to see where it's heading, and if it heads the way I just presented it, with the long-term goal being Daniel Bryan going back on his word, because he kind of was screwed by Teddy Long in a sense, and screwing over Teddy Long, and then, you know, making it better for himself and winning the title and having a long-term run with it through WrestleMania going until the summer, or at least through WrestleMania. That, you know, would be completely fine with me. You know, if anything else happens, then I'll come back and say, okay, that was a huge, huge mistake, which it might already be. But, um, um, and then, you know, because if you couldn't tell, the crowd absolutely went nuts during that whole segment. I mean, that was one of the best segments on WWE television this entire year. Um, my, if you take away the punk stuff, because that punk stuff is just on another level, then this might be the best segment, you know, or one of them, definitely. Um, then, you know, uh, you have guys like Cody Rhodes who is, you know, doing, I think he's improving a lot. You know, I think him and Brian could be the two guys going forward for the next five or so years that lead the SmackDown brand. You know, I mean, you're not going to have Orton at the reset, uh, at, at your, you know, uh, disposal for uh, too, too much longer. And then Barrett, I don't think is on their level. Um, I'm trying to think of another guy. Sheamus, eh, not really. He's good, but not that great. Um, I'm trying to think of other guys. Christian, I would once he comes back from injury. Mark Henry, I mean, I like him in his role, but he's not too great. Big Show has always been the same Big Show to me. Heel or face. I'm trying to think of other guys who are on the SmackDown brand that I'd, you know, put up there with them. Huh. I don't know of anyone, but... I really think I can name anyone right now, but if you have anyone that you would put up there with those two being you know, the two main event guys, that er, there was the two guys the title looms around and goes out to another guy every once in a while, leave it in the comment section because I can't think of anyone at the moment. But on the Raw brand, which should always be the focus, the biggest storylines and matches should probably always be on the Raw brand, um, which is why, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Daniel Bryan move to Raw in like two or three years, but that's that's way down the road for me. I think Punk is the pr- correct person to have as the champion right now on Raw. Especially with, you know, the stuff that's going on with Kevin Nash and Triple H and John Laurinaitis and everything that's going on with that. Um, and especially with how the WWE audience views the Raw product at the moment. The, CM Punk is the right man to be champion. Now, obviously a surprise win at Survivor Series for a lot of people over Albert, Albert, blah, 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 can't speak, Alberto Del Rio. Uh, I, I, Del Rio as champion was never as bad to me as some people thought it. I'm a big fan of Del Rio, but he needs to be worked out a little bit more before he has a long run as champion. So getting the belt off of him here is more than fine with me, especially at Survivor Series where you know New York is a very is always a very pro CM Punk town. Dude is you know outside WWE casualties and there's a, New York is always one of the better crowds, so they're always bigger on CM Punk. So um, it's definitely a great place to have the title change there. Um, you know Cena is always going to be around the title picture in some capacity. You know, obviously he has more stuff going on with The Rock and then The Miz and R-Truth angle with him teaming, you know, with The Rock at Survivor Series. Um, but it's also very, uh, you know, he's always going to be around the title picture. He's, he is John Cena for all, you know, and that's for his purposes. You know, he is, I, I forget how many times he's held the title, but it's, what, now 11? Something ridiculous. But, um, but, but that's what it is. You know, if he were to just be a chaser for a year or so, when he actually does win it again, which... No doubt he will. It's going to f- seem important then. You know, just not just, oh, okay, all right, Del, Del Rio's going to beat him, then Cena's going to beat him back, then Del Rio's going to beat him now, and Punk's champion. And then Cena originally beat Punk, and then Punk beat Cena back. You know, just stuff like that. Just The hot, the titles should never just be hot-shotted like that. That always pisses me off. Because, like, when, when you say you're now, you know, in UFC, you say you're, you know, a two-time light heavyweight champion, uh, like George St. Pierre, I think, is. Or, no, no, not George St. Pierre. He's middleweight champ. No, he's, wel- is he welterweight? Or middleweight. I, th- I believe George St. Pierre is Walter Wade. Um, and then, uh, god damn. I'm not the biggest UFC fan, but you get my point. I mean, um, he, he's been the two-time division champion of whatever he is. 
So or Anderson Silva, you know, going up to light heavyweight and then you know having him as the yeah I think George Saint Pierre. So then having it like that would be the way I would do it. You know, that's how that's how their fans treat their product. So that's how I'm gonna have I would want the WWE to treat their fans in a sense. I I mean having a realistic view on it is not a bad thing. You know, just having the title hot shot has never been a good thing to me in, for in any capacity with any title. Uh, with the maybe the exception of the tag team titles because the lack of WWE tag teams that there are. So, um, that that's a little bit of a tiny rant on that. But, um, trying to think about what else on the Raw brand. Okay, the undercard on the Raw brand. Ziggler is your champion. I am pretty happy with, um, with obviously his bigger, biggest pursuer right now being Zack Ryder. And I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a pretty big fan of Ryder just because a lot of, I mean, he is very, very entertaining to watch. You know, I watch every episode of Z, Too Long Island Story and stuff like that. But, you know, he, I think he, I think, give him, I, I'd very, be very, very interested, you know, to see how, if they were to give him the U.S. title, how that would go over. I'm just very interested. And if you watch the latest episode, I think that might have been writing John Morrison out of WWE Storyline through the show or something like that. You know, uh, it was reminiscent of the whole Mr. McMahon blowing up limo thing, which was very, very funny. So I'm very interested to see where that goes. But overall, as a product, the WWE, just keep it entertaining. Keep it. You know, just fun to watch and keep the right people in their position. Like, you don't, don't do a Sheamus where he has the title before he ha- needs it. Or maybe even an Alberto Del Rio right there. Just keep the right people. You know how to build stars correctly. You've shown you can do it in the past. If this Daniel Bryan thing leads him to the main event, you show you can still do it now. I mean, it's it's you've shown you have the wrestling minds to the point where you you can be current with the wrestling scene today. Not that it's not blown you by. And that's my main hope for the WWE, is to make the wrestling industry better as a whole by improving themselves. And if they can do that, then I'm a happy fan. All right, I will see you guys later. Bye.